Welcome to Community Connect on Morris Educational Television. I'm Ed Yaw, President of County College of Morris. I'm pleased to host today's program sponsored by the Morris Area Consortium for Local Educational Television, a cooperative effort by Morris County schools, colleges, and public libraries to bring you information on key issues in education. Today we welcome the President of the Morris County Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Paul Boudreau. Welcome to the program, Paul. Thank you, Ed. Glad to be here. Delighted to have you here. Before we talk about uh, the Chamber and all of its many activities and programs and so forth, tell us a little bit about your, your own background and what brought you to the Chamber. I spent uh, 30 years in corporate. Um, I worked uh, for Scott Paper Company for five years in the late 70s, early 80s. Came to Morristown in 1983 and interviewed with Allied. Allied Chemical had just changed their name to Allied Corporation after buying a company called Bendix in Michigan, which was an aerospace automotive company. And at the time, Allied asked me to go to Michigan. So I went to Michigan for 14 years, came back to Morristown in 1996. By then, the company had changed its name to Allied Signal, then, of course, Honeywell. And so I spent 25 years at Allied Signal Honeywell. Uh, prior to that, five years with Scott Paper Company, and then when I got out of graduate school in the mid-70s, I ran for the state legislature mm -hmm. in my home state of Maine and was fortunate enough to get elected. And so I've spent the last 40 years in a public affairs, community relations kind of a role, either in elective office or for the companies I worked for. Well, and I think with that uh, strong corporate background, you were an ideal candidate to become the president of, of the chamber, and you've been in that position now for how many years? I uh, uh, came to the chamber in the summer of 08, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it really was a nice fit in the sense that my role at Honeywell was public affairs, communications, advocacy, and so I spent time around the country working with legislators, working with local mayors, mm -hmm. I had responsibility at one point in my career for the Honeywell Foundation for about mm -hmm. 10 years, and so I was very involved in philanthropy, raising funds for various community organizations. And so when you looked at my corporate resume, it was really a pretty good resume for what the Morris County Chamber of Commerce is trying to do. Yeah, it really was a, a perfect fit. I remember the process that we went through, because I was on the board of directors of the chamber at that, uh, that time, and I know we were very excited to, to have you uh, choose to want to join us and uh, even more excited when you, you came on board. Now let's talk a little bit about the, the chamber itself, maybe just give uh, some idea of the scope of it, the uh, number of companies, membership, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, well we've been very fortunate, you know, obviously the last three or four years have not been kind to not-for-profit organizations and of course the chamber is a 501c6 not-for-profit organization. But when I arrived in the summer of 08, we were at about 670 members and we're at 840 today. And so we feel good about that. We've increased obviously the overall membership, but the other thing that we've done is made the membership more diverse. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, issues I think when I arrived that I had talked to the board about was that there was a feeling that the chamber was made up of the largest companies in Morris mm -hmm. County and then the smallest companies, but there wasn't a lot in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so in the last four years, we've picked up a lot of companies that have 100 employees or 200 employees. They're not, you know, they're not mm -hmm. BASF and they're not Pfizer, but they're also not, you know, the small entrepreneur who might have one or two or three employees. So we've really filled in that middle and we've become a stronger organization as a result, I think. And I know you've also made room for nonprofits as well, as well as colleges and universities and other nonprofit organizations. Uh. Yeah, we have, of the 840 members, we have about 80 that are not-for-profit organizations. Mm -hmm. And of, of course, that includes hospitals, sure. colleges, universities, and a lot of great organizations at the community level. Mm -hmm. And we've worked with the freeholders over the years, you know, in a number of areas. We just completed our 2012 not-for-profit conference mm -hmm. about two months ago. We had 300 people who attended. And again, I just think it's so important for us to work to support the not-for-profit community because frankly, my private sector members have relationships with mm -hmm. the not-for-profit community. And anything the Chamber can do to make those relationships work better for the community at large is something I think that's very important. Right. Another uh, relatively new development of the Chamber has been the development of the Business Cabinet. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the Business Cabinet was uh, something that really started before I arrived, and it was an effort to kind of create an executive forum within the Chamber. And it was an effort by the larger companies who kind of wanted to 
get in a room and talk to each other about some of their similar concerns. So the business cabinet has been around for a number of years. But when I arrived, unfortunately, due to a whole lot of things, including things like mergers, where we had two large companies in Morris County that became one, mm -hmm. um, the business cabinet membership was down to about seven companies. And these, these business cabinet members are major financial supporters of the chamber. And we decided about 18 months ago, you know, we really want to reinvigorate mm -hmm. the business cabinet. And we now have it back to 23 companies That's from great. about seven or so four years ago. So great base of support for the chamber amongst the larger companies mm -hmm. and trying to add more value to that group as mm -hmm. we go forward. And there's some special activities uh, for that group that kind of go above and beyond normal uh, membership? Yeah, one of the things we've, we started doing was, and historically the business cabinet didn't meet very much, and we decided you know, we wanted to have those people form relationships in that group that was much closer. So we, we've been doing a quarterly dinner so two months ago, we had dinner as a group with Duncan Niederauer, who's the press CEO of the New York Stock Exchange. Later in June, we're having a dinner with the CEO of BASF mm -hmm. in Florham Park. And so we put together these kind of quarterly dinner meetings with a significant business leader uh, to get that group around the table to talk about some of their concerns. And it's interesting because it, we get into everything from the economy to what's going on around the globe in business. And so it's been very fruitful, I think, for the members. Right. Kind of overall, now we've talked about companies and companies have come and gone and merged and so forth. What's your assessment of the current uh, economic climate uh, in the county at this point? Um, well, you know, Morris County's always had a pretty low unemployment rate and unfortunately, you know, prior to the recession we were in that 3%, 3.5% unemployment or more like 6 to 7 now. I mean, obviously that's still lower than the state mm -hmm. average or the national average. Um, when I look across our membership, you know, the larger companies who have a global footprint have much more opportunity for growth around the world. In, a, in an economy in the U.S., obviously, that's not growing very much, maybe one and a half to two percent mm -hmm. in terms of overall GDP. Um, the larger companies have more opportunity on a global basis. If you're a small company in Morris County, I think you're still sitting there saying, you know, when is the recession going to be over? Mm -hmm. Even though our federal government says it's over, mm -hmm. you know, from a demand standpoint, a lot of our companies are still looking for demand and, and not seeing a very strong economy at this point. Yep. Very good. Um, when we return from our break, we'll talk more to, with Paul about some of the programs and activities undertaken by the Chamber of Commerce. Please stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to Community Connect. I'm your host, Ed Yaw, and today we're talking with Paul Boudreau, President of the Morris County Chamber of Commerce. Well, we talked about the membership, and it's, it's grown dramatically, and even in these very, very difficult times. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the benefits when you uh, give your elevator speech to potential uh, uh, clients, customers, uh, corporations. What are some of the key elements that you talk about in terms of benefits of belonging to the Morris County Chamber of Commerce? Well, I usually refer to what I call the four-legged stool. And the four-legged stool for me is, the first leg of the stool is this whole aspect of networking and the events that we put on. But it's more than that. It's when somebody joins the chamber now, we want to have a private conversation with them about who are their customers, who are they trying to meet, how are we specifically going to connect them to somebody that's going to help their business. So that's the first leg of the stool. The second is we're doing a lot of great educational and professional development programs at the chamber. And it's not because the chamber has staff and expertise in that area, but now we have such a great membership that we have companies in, that, in those areas who can come in and speak to our members about a whole variety of things. And so I think we're doing a better job on education professional development as the second leg of the stool. The third leg of the stool is economic development and advocacy. <clears throat> Again, we have a government affairs committee at the chamber. We're very involved in conversations on a regular basis with our elected officials. We work with the freeholders on economic development across the county. And so that's kind of the third leg of the stool. Then the fourth leg of the stool is this thing we've talked about with the not-for-profit community. 
how do we connect our private sector members with not-for-profit organizations that they want to connect to, that they feel they have some affinity to? How do we create a forum inside the chamber where we can help the not-for-profit community maybe learn some business strategies that might work in their own environments in many cases? When it comes to things like having a great board, figuring out how to raise money, we can, we can take a lot of, mm -hmm. of those things from the private sector and bring them to the not-for-profit community. So I kind of talk about the four-legged stool as the value proposition for yeah. the chamber. Well, that's, a, that's a great way to look at it. And of course, uh, I, I know looking over your, your website, you've got many different committees. And I was impressed with the number of people that you've got involved uh, in those committees, which I think is uh, one of the keys to your success, again, promoting those networking opportunities and common interests uh, that, that, that folks have. Maybe we could talk a little bit about some of the committees and yeah, some of um, I want to highlight. Well, the, the important thing is that, you know, the chamber can't be successful without the volunteers. So we have, you know, five full-time people and four part-time staff members. We now have a 23-person board that is quite active in helping us on a whole variety of objectives we have. But all of those committees in the chamber, and we have 10 very active committees, they include government affairs, women in business, technology, education, the ambassador committee. We have a young professionals committee now that's growing. And all of the people who chair those committees and are active in those committees and help us figure out, you know, what kind of programming do we want to do for each of those committees that's going to make a difference for people, all of those people are volunteers. And so without them, of course, the yeah. chamber wouldn't be as successful as it is as it is. So it's a combination of the chamber staff, the board, and the volunteers that really make it happen. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the board first and then we'll talk about some of the other committees. What do you you mentioned the membership's about twenty three members. And yes. I presume re represents a pretty good cross section of the business and nonprofit communities. Yeah, I think the board is more diverse than it was historically. I think one of the issues that we had uh, was that even though, you know, when, when you look at the membership of the chamber, 50% of the companies in the chamber are one to 10 employees. And the remaining companies, of course, have more employees and that up, up the line. But when you looked at the board historically, the board was much more dominated by executives from larger companies. Mm -hmm. So what we've tried to do in the last three or four years is kind of take a look at the membership and say, the board really should mirror the membership. And so now if you looked at our 23 names, we have names of people obviously on that list that are mm -hmm. senior executives in some of the biggest companies in Morris County. We have a number of people on that list who were working for small companies or in a couple of cases as sole proprietors. Mm -hmm. So I think the board is more diverse, it more reflects the membership of the chamber, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the committees specifically. For example, I know the Government Affairs Committee has been uh, pretty active in sponsoring different events. Maybe you'd like to talk about that. Yeah, well, the Government Affairs Committee, our, our goal there really is to, is to keep an eye on public policy from a Trenton and Washington standpoint primarily. Occasionally, we might get involved in a county issue. But we want to keep an eye on what's going on and how do we create a forum at the chamber where our members can come and sit down with elected officials before the vote is taken, not after, on key issues, so that we have the opportunity as a business community to kind of talk to our elected officials about how we feel about certain issues. So we usually have a monthly meeting, and every month we invite in a guest speaker. And uh, re recently we had Leonard Lance mm -hmm. come in, Congressman Lance. We have a regular breakfast over the years with Congressman Frelinghuysen. Uh, we had Jerry Scharfenberger in the other day, who's head of the state plan, the new state mm -hmm. plan that the governor is coming out with. So our whole effort is for us to have relationships with elected officials, for them to know us, and for us to be able to advocate on some of the issues that we think are important to the business community. And I know you mentioned in passing in the, in the first segment uh, about the Morris County Economic Development Council. Maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, long before I arrived at the chamber, the freeholders made a decision that they wanted the chamber to be the primary arm of economic development in the county. So we get support, financial support from the freeholders for the Morris County Economic Development Corporation, which is a division of the chamber. And we recently hired a new person, Rebecca Fellman, to be the executive director of MCEDC. She has great experience at the municipal level in Morristown both from a planning board standpoint and from a standpoint of city council and decisions that get made by the governing body. And so we're trying to work 
increasingly with mayors. Some of the communities like Hanover and others have mm -hmm. formed their own economic development committees at the municipal level. Mm -hmm. We're working closely with them. The makeup of the chamber and the EDC means that we have great relationships with the major commercial real estate organizations mm -hmm. across the county. And so right now we're working on a number of issues around traffic, certain traffic issues in the county that impact employers, impact development issues, uh, working with municipalities on some things they want to do in their downtowns. And we have a strong relationship back to the governor's office in terms of the Business Action Center, mm -hmm. the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we see, we see those folks at least every other week. Right. And I know from past experience that uh, the two focuses there are to uh, work with existing companies in the county to make sure that they're happy here and will stay here and also to serve as a salesperson, if you will, for new companies that might be coming in here. And I think that's probably two roles that that uh, group plays. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's always nice to make the big announcement that a new company is coming to Morris County, and we'd love to be able to do that every day. But the fact of the matter is, how do we keep the companies we have, and how do we get them to invest their next capital dollar in Morris County as opposed to someplace else? Right. And so, it's a, it, as you say, Ed, it's a dual kind of uh, strategy, but clearly there's more opportunity to keep people here, uh, especially in this kind of an environment, right. than it is to have an announcement every day that there's another new company Absolutely. in Morris County. When Community Connect returns, we'll discuss the Leadership Morris program and some other special events hosted by the Morris County Chamber of Commerce. Hey, Roberta, it's Kathy. I found a great place that you have to check out right off Route 10 in Randolph. What is it? It's the Women's Center at CCM. The Women's Center at County College of Morris? That's right. It's a fantastic place located right at the County College of Morris. They do a variety of things to help you become independent. Like what? They helped me to identify my job skills and helped me with my resume. They have current job market information, too. I even went through a mock interview. I'm working now with someone to help me find a job with a future. That sounds great for you, Kathy, but I haven't worked for years. I've been home with the kids. Roberta, they specialize in helping women who have lost the support of their spouse, and you work with someone one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know. I mean, you know me. I don't even know the first thing about computers. Forget about a resume. They have one-on-one -on -one help to teach you about computers. They also have a legal clinic that can help you get valuable information regarding your divorce. They do a variety of things to help you get back into the workforce. They even have a job club open to any woman looking for work. How much does it cost? The advice is free. Free? That's right. Free. Okay, what do I do? Just call 973 328 5025 for an appointment and they'll tell you more. Welcome back to Community Connect. Once again, I'm your host, Ed Yaw, and today we're talking with Paul Boudreau, president of the Morris County Chamber of Commerce. In the last segment, we were talking about the Morris Economic Development Council, and uh, I think uh, we recently had an economic development luncheon that uh, they sponsor. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the organization has two or three major events a year. We had our awards luncheon recently. Um, and, you know, we're, we're trying to focus in on that group with a whole host of programs that we think make a difference. And one of them, Ed, was a program we did with you part, of, part of your team where we had a class at County College last month mm -hmm. where 38 municipal workers came. And the whole class was about customer service, because one of the complaints we get from the business community for people who have to go to the municipal level to get permits and things that we just get a lot of complaints from people saying, you know, I'm not sure the people at the municipal level care if we get our permit or not sometimes mm -hmm. or care if we get it on time or mm -hmm. those types of things. And so we're trying to focus in on those issues mm -hmm. so the business community feels like, you know, if I want to expand in Morris County, you know, people want to help me mm -hmm. do that and I'm not the enemy. That's great. And so, focusing on that, we have another major event coming up on September 18th. Uh, William Dudley, the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New mm -hmm. York, is going to be a luncheon speaker for the Morris County Economic Development Corporation in the chamber. And he's also going to spend some time in Morris County that day. He really likes to come into the community and, you know, visit some companies, take a look at some new products, maybe some R&D locations. Mm -hmm. We might take him up to Picatinny Arsenal. So we're in the process of planning that right now. That sounds pretty exciting. That's coming up in September. September 18th. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Now, some other programs I think that have been uh, really very successful. Leadership Morris. Let's talk a little bit about uh, about that. 
Yeah, Leadership Morris uh, really came together. You know, we just had the 20th anniversary of Leadership mm -hmm. Morris, and we've put over 500 people through the program. And I know you're familiar with it. And w what we do every year is we try to select 30 or 35, you know, middle mid-level managers to the v up to the VP level. It's not a, it's not a CEO kind of program at all. Um, and it's not, we're not bringing these people in for this program to make them better managers in their offices. We're, we're bringing them in to expose them to the community in the hopes that they're going to take a leadership position someplace in the community. So we take these 30 or 35 people, they meet monthly for a whole day. Every day there's a different theme. So on one month it might be economic development, the next month it's education, the next month it's public safety and crime. And so when, after you've gone through the program for a whole year, you've not only formed these new relationships with 30 of your classmates, but you've really gotten a sense of some of the critical issues that are going on around Morris County and a whole bunch of different sectors. And our goal then is for those people who've seen all of this to identify some of those not-for-profit organizations where they can be on a board or maybe a role they can play in one of those specific areas that they've got more exposure to now and understand a little bit better. Yeah, it's a great program. I think all of uh, my senior staff have gone through that program. I've certainly encouraged folks to do that. I think every year we have one or two and I think it's a great way for them to get to know the community. As you said, make some connections with, with people in the community. As a community college, it's important that we have that connection with the community yes, on many different yeah. levels. And uh, I think we've benefited from it. And uh, I'm sure other organizations uh, have as well. So it's a- Well, it, is, it is one of our signature programs. And again, I think uh, we've added a little more heft to that program in the last couple of years. The class now, they traditionally had done a Trenton Day but now we have them meeting with the state police when they go to Trenton and mm -hmm. going to the Rock, the mm -hmm. new state police, mm -hmm. uh, you know, security facility. So they're really seeing a lot when they go to Trenton now. Not only meeting with elected officials, but getting a view of some of the other pieces of state government, especially over the last decade as we've turned our attention more and more to things like homeland security right. and other kinds of issues. Absolutely, so I think it's one of our great programs, and and we have to continue to focus on it to make sure it, it has that edge that we need to make it the best we can make it. Right. I know another major event for you every year is uh, the annual meeting and I know a lot of effort goes into making that event. I remember going to my first one shortly after I became president here over 25 years ago and I was very impressed with the size and always have wonderful speakers. Maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, that event. Uh, yeah, the annual meeting is uh, kind of a tradition in Morris County, and, and over the years it was a lunch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we get anywhere from 500 to 700 people to attend that event. The last couple of years we've had some excellent speakers. Mike Huckabee, a couple of years ago, we had Jeb Bush mm -hmm. uh, on February 2 mm -hmm. of this year, mm -hmm. and we had 600 people, and we actually, because of Jeb's schedule, he wanted to do a dinner. Mm -hmm. So we turned it into a dinner this year, and mm -hmm. it worked out great. We he had did. 600 people at the dinner with Jeb Bush, and he talked about education, the importance of education to the business community. It was a great night, and um, yeah, our real signature event for the chamber in terms of the level of speaker we bring in mm -hmm. for that, and the and probably one of our biggest events of the year in yeah. terms of attendance. Yeah, it's a it's a great event, and one of the one of the keynotes too is the the H Bill Huber Award, and that's always been something of interest to me because uh, Bill Huber is the guy that interviewed me when I went on the board. He was the chair of the nominating committee when he was uh, oh, in really? St. Clair's at, okay. at the time. But yeah. maybe you talk a little bit about that that award. Yeah, well, you know, St. Clair's has sponsored the Huber Award for a number of years at the annual meeting. And again, the chambers focus on let's recognize somebody who's played a leadership role in the community. Not necessarily, you know, the business pe person right. who's made the most money right. or whatever, but you know, who, who's that person that, that's combined a business career and a career of being involved in the community and helping the community. So we're always looking for that candidate every year to give the Huber Award to. Right. That's and it. this year, of course, we gave it to Bart Oates, right. and uh, we thought that was a great choice. Yeah, it was. It was a great choice. You've had many great choices, including one of our former board chairs here, Peter Mancuso, uh, received that award a number of years ago as well. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, some of the other events, uh, uh, I know as a, as a nonprofit, we're always concerned about uh, raising money. I think uh, you've got a golf outing. Uh, I know you had to postpone it uh, this week and be rescheduled. but. 
and talk about some of the fundraisers that you have. Yeah, the golf outing is, you know, the annual meeting, the golf outing are our two biggest. And um, the golf outing, we attract somewhere between 100 and 120 golfers. And what we've done in the last couple of years is add a component to the golf outing in the evening where we, again, we select somebody, you know, a business person who's been involved in the community for some recognition at the golf mm -hmm. event dinner. And so this year, that's Mark Mackin from the Lap Group, mm -hmm. which is a German company that has mm -hmm. an operation in Florham Park. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we had to cancel yesterday, but we do, have, we do have 116 golfers signed up this year, more people coming in the evening, and we've just rescheduled the 2012 golf outing to June 25th yep. at Springbrook. So we think it'll be hugely successful. Hopefully, we'll get some decent weather. That's great. Well, the nature of this program is it'll probably be broadcast all summer, so by the time a lot of people see it, the event will have passed. But, yes. uh, but anyway, uh, for those of you who are watching who are, are interested in uh, that event on the, t on the 25th, did you say? 25th of, of June, June, yes. Uh, and they can still take advantage of the September 18th luncheon with Bill right. Dudley. Absolutely. Uh, Federal Reserve Bank of New York. That's great. That wraps up this edition of Community Connect. I want to thank Paul Boudreau for coming in to talk about the Morris County Chamber of Commerce. For more information about the Chamber, you can visit their website at www.morrischamber.org. For more information about the County College of Morris, we welcome you to visit us at ccm.edu. I'd like you to know about your thoughts about today's program and ask you to share your comments and thoughts with me. You can write to me, Ed Yaw, at County College of Morris, 214 Center Grove Road, Randolph, New Jersey, 07869, or email me at yaw at ccm.edu. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Ed Yaw. We'll see you again next time on Community Connect on Morris Educational Television. That does it. That's good.